Hi guys, it's Vivi and uh, welcome back to the channel. Gamescon 2019 was held in Germany, so with that, THQ Nordic, the publisher for Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom, well, they had a long livestream on their channel, with a bunch of guests around the gaming community present during a first official pre-alpha on-screen gameplay. Now, during this 15 minutes demo, which uh, was played quite a couple of times throughout the livestream, well, we get our first look at Jellyfish Fields. The first part had Artcore Cosplay, also known as Ellie, and content creator Lenny Fakate. Second part would be Twitch streamer Sintika, and the third part of this gameplay would be actual people from the development team. Well, from both the publisher and the development team. Producer Martin Kruch from THQ and CEO Andrew Hans from Purple Lamp. Purple Lamp, for those of you who don't know, being the developer for Rehydrated. Now I'll give you guys a brief analysis, okay? So let's go. They start with, of course, the title screen. With the main theme song playing, the actual theme song from the series itself. Yes, the original game did play the song, but the feel and the tone was different. So the one you hear throughout the demo, it's the one from a TV show. Now of course, considering this is very very early footage, this might not be the title screen for the final product. As for the original, it was 3D and, you know, different. Now guys, there's lots of colors. Everyone noticed it, right? Jellyfish Fields looks much more vibrant, yes. But maybe a bit too much. Like the pink especially, eh. I feel like it's too much. Now it's alpha footage, obviously this is gonna change. I'm expecting a lot of the colors and even the lighting to change for the release. Heck, even producer Martin Kruch said the same thing, expect colors and even lighting to change for the final product. As for the first conversation going on on screen, the camera doesn't focus on the player. Oh, let's not forget we get our first scene with Squidward. It looks awesome. There's some lines missing, alright. You know, where Spongebob mentions he's bald. Well, about that. The demo has a simplified version of dialogue. The no close-ups part? It's all part of early development. Confirmed by producer at THQ. Slight difference? Instead of saying quit, it says skip and they seem to be playing this on Xbox. That too, the words alone could change. Squidward looks even more lively. Like, his nose looks much more animated than before. The tickies have been given much more detail. They got a nice makeover. As for the shiny objects, when breaking tickies or beating up fodder robots, you now see them on the field. Like, in the original, you would break these tickies, but when collecting those shiny objects, you wouldn't really see them getting collected. Now as for these fodder robots, they now glow red when in attack mode, giving them much more life. They were always green in the past. As for this one right here, the ham he's holding is actual metal. In the original, it looked like real ham. About these shiny objects again, THQ explained that they spread them out some more. By this, they mean give you visual clues about some hidden locations, like this part right here, for example. They don't want to overdo it, of course, you know, not spoil all the secrets, but they do want to give you a better idea of what's in your surroundings. The font color even looks different. This is alpha footage, it could change. There's a lot of things we can compare. Like the spinning attack now has a rainbow effect. That one I expect to stick around, I like it. But, as I said, considering this is pre-alpha footage, guys, all of these could just be placeholders. The bowling section says coming soon, the bungee hook section even says coming soon, like this is very early stuff, guys. The camera even. Uh, maybe this might be on their part, I'm not sure, but it could also be part of the pre-alpha footage. It seems to move above the player, like compared to the original, the camera moves when you're jumping. So guys, on the left side it says pre-alpha, so... I guess we shouldn't get too worried, okay? Now, THQ and uh, Purple Lamp did answer some questions from the chat. The producer mentions how the original had a difficulty spikes. For example, one level I can think of is Kelp Forest. Now, they did also bring up Kelp Forest. Just the level itself, they didn't really discuss it. But when talking about these difficulty changes, they did bring up the level. Since Kelp Forest is being brought up, I mean, for the GameCube version at least, people feel like the level was too dark. So they're gonna keep that one in mind. They didn't necessarily say much about these difficulty spikes, but they did say they're focusing on that. Whether this means they're gonna lower the difficulty, tweak it, uh, we aren't sure. 
When this remake was announced, we knew they were going to restore content, right? It says it on their website. Robo Squidward, for example, was already confirmed. Now the funny thing is, in this livestream he uses the word deleted scenes. Yeah, we get that. With boss battles you get scenes, but when mentioning Robo Squidward, he describes it as a scene. I guess by scene he means when you have a new boss battle you get a scene along with it, right? As fans speculated when Rehydrated was announced, Patrick's dream level will also be restored. The producer at THQ did acknowledge the existence of a hack people used in the past. You know, unlock Patrick's dream, it looked all glitchy, the skybox was messed up and everything. Yeah, they know about that. They plan on rebuilding Patrick's dream. Make it longer than what it used to be. He then goes on to say that all restored content is outside of the main experience. So I take it they mean all these are restored content won't actually be part of the story, but more like a side quest kind of thing. Like it's not gonna mess up with the pacing of the original story. Now what about a public demo, Vivi? They didn't really have any announcement on that part. If anything, since the game will feature multiplayer, they might invite more people into trying out the new Horde mode. They did confirm that the Horde would consist of robots. Which uh, was probably obvious to some of you. Whether it's local gameplay or online, Horde mode is up to two players. As Spongebob, Sandy or Patrick. Now of course this mode will be separate from adventure. The word co-op is also brought up during the livestream. Don't mistaken it with adventure co-op, okay? No such thing confirmed. I guess co-op falls within the multiplayer aspect of things, so yeah. A maximum of two players online and locally. Next, Sea of Purple Lamp talks about modernizing Battle for Bikini Bottom, especially in terms of visual cues, like in the original. Tentacles from uh, King Jellyfish would still hurt you, but visually you couldn't see that. Now visually you can tell, the shock effect all over its body, and now the top even gives you a cue to when to hit him. Now in terms of speedruns or glitches, THQ explains that hey, if this glitch isn't easy to produce for the average fan, you know, if it's hard to execute, then it's okay to leave it in. But it's something that's uh, very easily exploitable, then they're gonna have to fix that one. There's no announcement on a collector's edition, for those of you wondering. As for the cheat codes part, they said it's not out of place when it was brought up in the chat. It hasn't really been discussed with the team really. If they do add cheats, they want it to be something funny. But the thing I found weird, like the original did have cheats, right? But the way they were speaking throughout the livestream, it's like they were leaning more towards new cheats. There was no mention of returning cheat codes. But if it does happen, they want it to be funny. Someone also asked uh, about potential more Spongebob games. It uh, really depends of the fans, you know. The typical reply, if it does well, if it sells well, expect more games. Now what about the voices? Exact same voice files from the original are being used. As for the German dub, it's getting a new voiceover completely from actors from the series. In German, don't forget. But as for the English version, let's say Mr. Krabs, who's voiced by Clancy Brown on the TV show, well, whether he's gonna return or not, we don't know. He was originally voiced by Joe White for the video game. But if Clancy Brown reprises his role for the video game, that'd be awesome. And for those of you who love 60 FPS, yes, the question was brought up. Is SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated going to run at 60 FPS? THQ explained that yes, they are considering 60 FPS. And finally, for the release window, it's currently at 2020. No other specifications yet, alright folks? So with that being said, I've been Vivi, and as usual, leave comments or anything like that. If you noticed anything interesting from this gameplay, mention it in the comment section below. And yup, I'll see you guys next time.